Hello, this video will cover section 8.3, Introduction to Probability, and this video is intended for the class Math 1324, Math for Business and Social Science. So um, we're going to start with um, example one, and um, however, before we get to that example, we're going to talk about what is a random experiment and is something that sometimes we call a random phenomenon. Has it, a random experiment has outcomes that we cannot predict. And so random experiment, we cannot predict. And, but the non, nonetheless have a regular distribution and a large number of repetitions. We call a repetition from a random experiment a trial. And so, this could be as simple as just tossing a coin. The possible results of each trial are called outcomes. And for instance, when we flip a coin, the two outcomes that we could get are heads or tails. And we do not know whether a particular flip will yield heads or tails, but we do know that if we flip the, the coin a large number of times, about half of the flips, will be heads and the other half will be tails. So we said that is a 50-50 probability every time you flip a coin to get heads or tails. And so each flip will be considered a trial. And the sample space is all the possible, um, all the possibilities that you can get from that trial. And so for flipping a coin, the two possibilities are to get heads or tails, and so that is what we call sample space, and we use uppercase S to denote that. So the sample space for that will be heads or tails. Now for example one, um, we're going to give only the sample space. We're not going to calculate probabilities yet, and so if we use the spinner that is on this figure 8.17, and we want to write down what the sample space will be. So those will be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And that would be it for the sample space. Now part B, it says for the purpose of a public opinion poll, respondents are classified as young, middle age, or senior, and also as male or female. And so for this one, um, we could actually have um, young people of each sex. So young males or young females. We could also have middle age males and we could have middle age females also we could have uh, seniors who will be males and also seniors who will be females and so the sample space will have a total of one two three four five six combinations. So um, those six will be the sample space. For part C, we have an experiment that consists of studying the numbers of boys and girls and families with exactly three children. And we're going to let lowercase b represent a boy and lowercase g represent a girl. And so we do have a diagram on the right side. And so what I'm going to use is I'm going to what I'm going to do is use that diagram. So I'm going to take the combination where after three births, the family had a boy, a boy and a boy. So that would be that branch of the diagram. And we're going to use boy, boy, boy. The next one is going to be two boys and then a girl right here. So it's going to be boy, boy and girl. The next one is going to be, um, I'm going to change the color. So it will be boy, girl, and girl. So boy, girl, and girl. 
And then for the next one, we're going to have boy, girl, and then a boy. Boy, girl, and a boy. And then let's move on to the other branch. So for that one, we're going to have, um, let's do this part here first. So girl, boy, boy. Then we will have girl, boy, and then a girl. And now let's go for the last uh, bunch. And so we're going to have girl, girl, and girl. And the very last one will be girl, girl, and then a boy. Now, for the sample space, um, the fact of having, for example, here, there's only one boy and two girls, and here there's only one boy and two girls. However, because um, we're talking about boys and girls, babies that are being born, the order does matter. So imagine if the first child was a boy or the last child is a boy, that is, um, those two are completely different situations when the oldest child is a boy or when the youngest one is a boy with two sisters. So that will be the answer for this problem. And now we're gonna move on to the next slide. So for this one, let's go ahead and define what is an event. And so an event is an outcome or a set of outcomes of a random experiment. Thus, an event is a subset of a sample space. So we've been working with sets and subsets. So each event is a subset of the sample space. For example, if the sample space for tossing a coin is head or tails, the one event of getting heads represents a subset of the sample space. So now um, the following four examples are talking about rolling a die. And so we're talking about just a regular six-sided die. And so you know it has numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so we have a total outcome. If we were to list the sample space for rolling a die, it will be the numbers. You could get numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. And so to find the event, the subset of having the first one here, it says of rolling and of showing an even number. Even numbers, well, we know that will be two, four, and six. And so that's what we see here. Now for our next example, it says here a die shows a one. So there's only one possibility of getting one. So that is our subset. The next one, it says a uh, die shows a number that is less than five. And so less than five will have numbers one, two, three, and four. And so that's what we have listed here. And for the last one, it says the die shows a multiple of three. So multiples of three will only be the number three and the number six. And that is why you have that as your sample space. And remember, those are subsets of the sample space. So now let's try to do example two. And for this one, we're going to refer to example one, part C. So once we wrote down the sample space, we knew that they were going to be eight possible um, probabilities. And the out of those, the event H, we're going to call it that. And how many ways can we get exactly two girls? So that will be the combination from the sample space, the one that has the boy being born first and then two girls right after. Or it could be a girl, then a boy, and then a girl. Or it could be two girls at the beginning and then one boy. And that would be the sample space for part A. Now, for the next one, the event is, um, it says event K will represent 
three children of the same sex. So in this case, we could have two events, girl, 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 or boy, boy, boy. Now for the last one, event J, it says the family has three girls. Um, so for that one, it will be just girl, girl, girl. So out of the eight possibilities from the sample space, only one of those will guarantee three girls. And that's it for problem two. So um, sometimes if an event equals the sample space, then the event is called a certain event. But if the event is the empty space, then we say that the event is an impossible event. Okay. So for example three, it says suppose a fair die is rolled and the sample space is one, two, three, four, five, and six, like we mentioned earlier. So one through six, and we need to find the requested events. So the event that the first one will be the subset that the event shows up for. So it would just be that. That's it. The event that the number sh is showing, uh, the number showing is less than 10. So the numbers from the sample space that are less than 10 is actually all of them. So that is something that we roll as a certain event. All the numbers that we roll will be less than 10. So this is a certain event. And the next one, part C, it says the event that the die shows a seven. And so for that one, there's no number seven in the die. We only have numbers one through six. So for that one, the solution will be the empty set. And that is what we refer to as an impossible event. Okay, so that's it for example three. So let's move on to example four. And before we get to that, let's go over that box. So consider E and F events for a sample space S. So they're subsets of S, of the sample space. Then if E and F, E intersected with S occurs, that is because both the um, event occur, um, I'm sorry, both E and F occur. So intersection and the word and are related. Now the other one says E, so remember this is the intersection. And the next one will be E union F. And so for that one, that means um, that the event uh, will be E, or F, or both, that would be okay. But as long as it occurs in one of them, one of those occur, E or F, it will be already in the union. It doesn't need to be in both. Now, the last one will be E complement. Well, second one, we call that union. And this one will be the complement of E, which it also means that is not E or not in E. So now let's go ahead and answer example four. So we have a study of college students group the students into various categories that can be interpreted as events when a student is selected at random. Consider the following events. So the first event is that the student, event E, the student is under 20 years old if you select um, a student at random. Um, now, F it means the student is male, and G, it means that the student is a business major. And so what we're going to do here is describe the words, and you do have to do something similar um, in your on your take home exam. So part A, it says E complement or not in E. 
So how can we say with words the opposite of what event E is? So E is student, the student is under 20 years old. So for the complement of E, we're going to say the student is 20 years old or older. And we include 20, the student is exactly 20 years old because E only says under. They're not including 20 there. So that will be the answer for part A. What is E complement? And let's move on to part B. And it says complement of F. F says the student is a male. So if the student is not a male, the student is a female. So we're going to talk about a female. And then intersection with G. And G, we already know, is business major. Business. Oops, only one S. Business major. So to describe this um, intersection, we will say that they are females studying business or with business as their major. And finally, for part C, the problem says complement of E, union G. So in this case, union means or. And we're going to say that the student is 20 years old or older. That will be E complement or a business major because that will be G. And that's it. That is the answer for part four or example four. Now um, we're going to go ahead and move to the next one. And the next concept is about joint event. So two events that cannot occur at the same time, such as getting both heads and tails while flipping a coin, you can only get one. Um, they are called disjoint events. Disjoint events are sometimes referred to as mutually exclusive. So one outcome has nothing to do with the other. So when the intersection is the empty set, we know that they are disjoint events. And you can see on the Venn diagram, the two circles are not connected, they're not intersecting. So we have here the sample space. It are the numbers from one through six, and is uh, the sample space of tossing a die. Then we're gonna let one event, E, and that will be the circle that you see here in blue, contains the numbers four, five, and six. The other event, G, which is the other circle, contains the numbers one and two. So the question here is, are E and G disjoint events? And even if we didn't have the um, drawing for it um, to check if they are disjoint, we need to check for the intersection. And so the intersection here, we know that event E has the numbers 4, 5, and 6, while the other event G includes the numbers 1 and 2. And so in this case, you can see that they have nothing in common, so therefore the intersection is the empty set, and yes, they are disjoint events. And that will be the answer for problem five. Now we're going to go to our next concept, which will be the basic probability principle. And for sample spaces with equally likely outcomes, the probability of an event is defined as follows. So we have 
the basic probability principle, and it says, let S be the sample space of equally likely outcomes, and let event E be a subset of S. Then the probability that event E occurs is the number of instances in which that event occurs, E, divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So for example, um, we're gonna go back to the problem of rolling a die. And as you can see here, they're calling it a fair die. So that means that it's not, um, the weight is equally distributed and it's not like a fake die. So with the sample space, we already know one, two, three, four, five, six, because those are all the possible outcomes that we can have. Now, give the probability of each of the following events. So part A says the die shows an even number. So let's see, the probability of getting an even number. And so that will equal to the number of even numbers. So we have two, four, and six. So that's a total of three divided by the number of elements in the sample space. So the total, which is six. So three divided by six. And if we reduce this fraction, it will be one over two. And so that will be the part, the probability, one half or point half, point five. Sorry. Now um, the probability of the die showing an eight. So that is one of those impossible events. So the probability of showing an eight will be zero over six, which is zero. And in this case, we don't say the empty set. We say zero because we're not asking. Um, how many possibilities do you have to get eight? Um, actually, yes, we are. But we're not asking um, to list the possibilities as a set. We're asking about the probability. And probabilities go from zero to one or from zero to 100%. So 100% is when you are certain something will occur. But zero could also be a probability. Now, for part B, it says the die shows a number less than 10. And so to have a number less than 10, remember, based on our sample space, all the numbers that you have, 1 through 6, they're all less than 10. So we're going to have a total of 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. Um, so 1 could be considered like 100%, and 0 will be considered as the 0 that it will not happen at all. Okay, and this will conclude the video, part one, um, problem seven, eight, seven and eight are recorded in a different video. So thank you for watching. Remember to take notes so you can get extra credit.